Come in. The prisoner you wish to see is here, sir. Then send him in. I suppose you know that by tomorrow morning you'll be tried by a military tribunal and most likely sentenced to be hanged. Yes, sir. I also suppose you know why. I understand it was for killing an Indian. Not just an Indian. This particular Indian was a chief, traveling here at my express invitation to attend a treaty council. Instead of a treaty, I now have every Indian in the Ohio Valley threatening a war. Yes, I know. Then why did you do it? Confound it, I don't understand you. You're a free man. You own a plantation which you won't bother to work. You have an excellent record as a soldier in the Continental Army. And you stand here before me now branded as a common murderer. General, what makes you think I killed him? It's common knowledge. You're an Indian hater. I could name you several others. Is this your knife? General, you know it's mine. There's not another one like it on the frontier. Well, this is the knife that killed the Indian. What do you have to say to that? I don't suppose you'd believe me if I told you it was stolen from me a few weeks ago. If that's true. You'll have a chance to tell it to the court. <laughs> you think they'll believe me? I'll tell you truthfully. I doubt it. But beyond seeing that you're fairly tried, I can't be of any help to you. Yes, sir. Uh, General. What is it now? You say there are a lot of Indians looking for my scalp? Well, give me my knife back and a tomahawk and turn me loose. I'd rather take my chances burning at the stake than dangling at the end of a rope. You know that's impossible. Yes, I suppose it is. But I just thought I'd save us both a lot of trouble. Good day, sir. Guard! Yes, sir? Take this man back to his cell. Yes, sir. With all the threats the Indians have been making, I think they'd have sentries posted. Them Indians ain't gonna bother us as long as we got you. All they want is to see that you get hung. They'll be here to see that. Soldier, when they get here, would you give them my regrets and tell them that I'm sorry I have to disappoint them? Close up for the night for all the business I'm going to get. There ain't no sense of burning up good firewood. It's a little early for that. It's barely dark. Well, that don't make no difference. Man would be a fool to come out in weather like this. Well, that's the category you're going to put me in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Becky sends you out on an errand. You can't very well say no. Besides, it wasn't raining like this when you first come in, so I reckon that excuses you. But you are going to be wet to the skin by the time you get back to Dallas. Well, that's why I came in here, to wait until it let up. But if you're going to throw me out, I suppose... Well, that just depends, Mingo, on how much money you spent with me. See, now, there was a uh, 
Hot rum and uh, hot food and... Uh, oh. Customer hey. Cincinnatus. <clears throat> well, is there something I can do for you, gentlemen? You can give me a mug of hot rum and don't put in too much water. I'll right? take some of this thing. Uh, you sure picked a good night for it. <sighs> it must be something very important that brings you gentlemen out in this kind of weather. Chasing a prisoner. Escaped four days ago from Fort Washington. Headed this way, last report we had. And they only sent two men after him. That doesn't make him sound very important. Oh, he's important. And there is more than two of us. We just got sent up here on a scout. Fact is, there's two full companies out in the field. Two full companies just to catch one man? And General Harmer himself. The general's setting up headquarters over on the Lincoln River. He don't aim to let him get away a second time. He ain't gonna get away. Not if I get him in my sights again. That sounds as though you plan on killing him. Well, now that's our orders. Shoot on sight. But it's more than likely he's already dead. Well, what makes you say that? Well, in the first place, he's handcuffed. And every Indian in the territory is hunting for his scalp. On top of that, there's a price on him. Five hundred dollars. More than likely, every settler in Kentucky's out hunting him. <laughs> he won't be too hard to find, being a Negro. A Negro? A runaway slave? No. That's the funny part. He's an educated man. Free, a property owner. Name a Kendall. That wouldn't be Birch Kendall. That's the one. What's he wanted for? Murder. Kendall. Birch Kendall. I'm just trying to figure where I heard that name before. Say, ain't he a friend of Daniel's, Mingo? Yes. I believe Daniel soldiered with him for a while. Uh, whom did he kill? Killed himself an Indian chief coming in to talk a treaty with the general. If he's not caught, there's going to be seven Indian nations threatening to go to war. Uh, Cincinnati, I think I'll be moving on. Why, well, the rain ain't let up none yet. Well, I've been wet before. Daniel, you and that Indian mentioned. What's his last name? Uh, Boone, Daniel Boone. This settlement was named after him. If this Kendall is a friend of his, it could be that he might go to Boone for help. Wouldn't do him any good if he did. How can you be so sure of that? Well, I know Daniel Boone, and I'm here to tell you right now, there ain't a more law-abiding citizen in the whole Kentucky Territory. Now, he ain't the type to go around helping no murderer. Well, now, if he's smart, he won't. The general wouldn't take real kindly to somebody interfering. Where's he live? Where's who live? General Harmer? This Boone fellow, the one we're talking about. Mm, him? Well, he, uh, he lives just outside the settlement. How far outside? How far? Well, not too far. And uh, not too close, come to think about it. Just all depends on how you look at it. Why? I think when this rain lets up, we might ride out to see him. I'd like to ask him a few questions. Just gonna be wasting your time. We got a lot of it. You just set out that jug of rum and get some hot food on the table. We'll be on our way. And it's gonna take some time to fix the food. And the storm being what it is, I wasn't expecting no customer. Well, while it's cooking, you might see to it our horses get some grain. They've been traveling hard all day, too. We'll do just that. I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but I thought you ought to know. I'm glad you told me, Mango. Somebody's got to try to stop this thing before it gets started. Dan, I don't usually protest your judgment, but to set out in the middle of the night and in this storm, can't it wait until morning or at least until the rain's over? I'm afraid it can, Becky. I may be too late already. Too late for what? To keep Birch from being shot, or even worse, to keep him from getting clean away. Well, if two companies of the Continental Army couldn't find him, what makes you think you can? I know where to look. I'm going to need some salt pork and some cornmeal and a little of that jerky if there's any left. Mingo, can't you talk some sense into him? Don't waste your breath. I wasn't going to. I'll get the supplies you need, Dan. 
Daniel, what do you hope to accomplish? Well, I hope to stop an Indian war, maybe save a man's life in the bargain. Or help in hanging him, if he's guilty. At least I can see that he gets a trial. He had that chance before he ran away. Sometimes a man gets desperate, goes off half-cocked. Just because he ran doesn't mean he's guilty. I'll grant you that, but since he escaped once, he may object to going back. Well, I expect he'll need a little persuasion. If I were in his shoes, I'm not sure that I would consider you doing me a favor. You were in his shoes once, and they didn't hang you. If I hadn't gone after you, you'd still be running. Well, I can't argue that point with you. Maybe I can return the favor. By doing what? By going with you. They say there's safety in numbers. Well, thank you, Mango. I'd rather you'd stay here. If there's Indian trouble, I'd like to know that Israel and Rebecca are at the fort. Here's the food you wanted, Dan. Will you be gone long? It's hard to say. Now, you tell Israel. That's right, Becky. If anybody should ask, I've already gone. out in the storm. Daniel, you uh, looks like you're planning on leaving. I had it in mind. Well, you just get it out of your mind because you ain't going. Why not? Well, send two soldiers. They're real suspicious of you. And likely is not to come out here to talk to you just as soon as this rain lets up. Well, it's too bad they'll make the trip for nothing. But you can't do it, Daniel. At least, why, not until morning. They'll be gone by then. But if you ain't here when they get here, they'll say you're aiding and abetting a criminal. Now, what are they going to say when they find out you came all the way out here to warn them? They think I'm out tending to their horses. Well, you better get on back before they think different. You mean you ain't going to change your mind? Nope, we've been over that already. Now, you get on back before you get all wound up along with me. Well, if you ain't the stubbornest man I ever did meet in my entire life. Suppose it wouldn't do any good to ask you again. The sooner I get out of here, the better. Can I ask where you're going? If you don't know, then you won't have to lie when someone asks you. You take care of this one. Well, Daniel, where are you going? Well, if you were on the run, then go, where would you head for? I would probably head for Murdoch's down in the bottoms. Don't envy your trip. How long you plan on staying this time, Birch? Oh, just long enough to get a drink and a good night's sleep. Look like you could use it. And some hot food, Murdoch. I've been living like a bear these past couple of days, just on roots and grubs and berries. I'll get the food. You've been running that long, Birch. What do they want you for? For stealing a pair of handcuffs. Coot, will you be careful with that hammer? Uh, you want these irons off, don't you? I want the irons off, but I want to keep the arm. I still got a good ways to travel. You're not in any shape to travel, Birch. I will be by tomorrow. Yeah, who's going to find you back here? There ain't too many people knows their way back through these swamps. You know one is too many? Well, I guess you know what you're doing. Hey, you're free man, Birch. I couldn't ask for a better job. No. When the man gets here, would you give him these with my compliments? <laughs> and you gentlemen would like to join me at the bar? That'll be I'll a pleasure. Murder. Oh, dear. Yeah. Too bad you can't stay on us, Bell Birch. While we're planning a rendezvous before we set out winter trapping down on the Tennessee. Twenty, thirty, maybe more of the boys would be here any day now. She gonna be a real jamboree. <laughs> Is Hayes Fuller gonna be here? Oh, I don't rightly know. I expect so. He ain't missed one in ten years that I know of. What do you want Hayes for? Oh, just a personal matter. He's got something that belongs to me. Well, if you ain't got no place to stay, I got a back room here. You're welcome to it. 
Well, it's very thoughtful of you, Murdoch. I'll keep that in mind, because I just may want to stay and talk to Hayes. I'd advise against it, Birch. Friend Boone! Why, I haven't seen you since the Battle of Point Pleasant. Been a long time. Too long. Landlord, another drink. Tad Parsons, Seymour Coots, Daniel Boone. Mm. And Mr. Murdoch, the proprietor of this elegant saloon. Murdoch? To the renewal of an old acquaintance. I see you got the handcuffs off. Yes. I had a little help. But what brings you down here to the bottoms, Boone? These aren't your ordinary stamping grounds. I came looking for you. Now, oh, that's interesting. Along with two companies of soldiers. Or maybe you knew that, too. No, I didn't know that. Two companies of soldiers? Birch, what are you went and done? He's wanted for killing an Indian. Uh, I've known some other people done the same thing. Except they didn't have the army chasing them. Well, this time the army calls it murder. And another thing maybe you don't know. There's a $500 bounty on your scalp. General Harmer wants you real bad to come looking for you personally. A general? He set up field headquarters on the Licking River. I knew the general would be a little upset because I took off that way. But I never thought he'd try and hunt me down himself. It may take them a while to find their way through the swamps, but they'll be here. Looks like I'll have to miss that rendezvous. Thanks for the warning, Boone. Well, Doc, will you fix me up some food? I'll need a rifle, ammunition, a knife, and a flint and steel. I've always wondered what the land looked like west of the Mississippi. Don't bother, Murdoch. I didn't come to warn you, Birch. I came to take you back. Take me back? Now, that's friendship for you. Maybe the only way to save your life. Answer one question for me. Did you kill that Indian? The answer's no. But my knife was found in his back. And with my reputation, who'd believe me? How did that knife get there? I went trapping with a man named Hayes Fuller last winter. We had a good catch. When he sold it, we had a few drinks by way of celebration. When I woke up, Hayes was gone, and so was everything I owned, including the knife. So that's why you want to see Hayes. Can you think of a better reason? If you didn't do it, come on back and stand trial. If you try to run, somebody will wind up shooting you in the back. I'll take that gamble. You'd never make it, Birch. I made it this far. The word wasn't out on you until two days ago. News like that travels fast. You're wasting your breath, Boone. I'm not going back. I think you will. Realize it's my life you're playing with. Not Coots or Parsons or Murdoch's or yours, but mine. It belongs to me. And I'll lose it or live it any way I choose. That's the whole trouble. It's not just yours. Unless you come back and stand trial, every tribe west of the mountains will go on the warpath. The answer is no. You're coming back with me. One way or another. Friend, you got a nerve thinking you could walk into the bottom single-handed and walk out with a prisoner if and he don't want to go. If I figured I needed help, I'd have brought some. You're a big talk Indian wars and lives being lost. I reckon you're not as interested in that as you are in that bounty. I'm going to do you a favor, Coot. I'm going to forget you said that. <laughs> Turning a man in for killing an Indian. I've heard about you, Boone, being real partial to the Redskins. Even got one as your best friend. Well, mister, I can't stand Indian lovers.
goons have to whip them both. Ain't you gonna help them? Why should I? They're fighting for you, ain't they? I fight my own fights. I didn't start this one. Why should I finish it? Give me another drink. Get it for yourself. All right, come on. All right, you lift a spoon. Ain't that enough? Not near. You're not going with me, Birch? If I'd have had one day's rest, I don't think you could have done this to me. That's one thing you're not going to find out because I'm not going to give you another chance. Now, let's get started. Am I to understand that Boone came to your tavern to warn Kendall? It's the truth, General. There wasn't anything I could do about it right then, but I came to you as fast as I could after they left. Well, that confirms the information I'd already received. Go on. Yes, sir. I've just received news that Kendall may be traveling east on the north bank of the Ohio in the company of a man named Boone. Have Captain Fields ready his men for immediate patrol and then report to me. Yes, sir. Oh, one more thing. Have him dispatch couriers to all the settlements, informing them that I put a price on Boone's head, too. The same as Kendall's. Yes, sir. Thank you for your information, Mr. Murdoch. That'll be all. Uh, about that uh, bounty general. Uh, now, if your men should capture them, you won't forget me, will you? I never forget an informer. If the army captures them, You'll get your money. Uh, Becky still ain't had no word from Daniel yet, huh? No, but uh, then it's a little early to expect any news. Daniel left only two days ago. Just time enough to get himself killed. Likely the whole <laughs> army's out looking for him now. Why should they be? A man has a right to take a trip if he feels like it. Well, not the way he done it. You know, Mingo, I got a feeling. Oh, now you don't have to tell me. Hot rum, hot food, and I'll tend to your horse. You got a real good memory, landlord. Well, running a business like this, you got to, you know. Man likes to be remembered, makes him feel important. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, seeing as how you're still around, uh, reckon you ain't run into that Kendall fella yet, huh? Thanks to your friend Boone. He got there first and he helped him escape. In spite of all you said about him being a law-abiding citizen. Daniel Boone done a thing like that? Just never would have thought it of him. It also doesn't happen to be true. Are you calling me a liar? No, 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 no. I'm simply saying that you've been sadly misinformed. How come you know so much about it? I was in Boone's cabin the night he left. 
He's not trying to help Kendall escape. He's trying to convince him to go back and stand trial. <laughs> That's not the story I heard. Besides, it don't make any difference now. The general has put a price on Boone's head, too. I reckon neither one of them are going to live too long. Well, Cincinnati, uh, have that room ready for Israel and Rebecca. I'll be back with them shortly. Good day. Well, get it ready for them. What was it all about? Oh, nothing. Uh, you just come in to do a favor for a neighbor. patrol we've seen today. I didn't figure it'd be looking north of the river and this far to the east. You still think we'll make it to Fort Washington? No, nope. but that's not where we're going. The Licking River's not too far away. As soon as I find a place to hide you, I aim to pay a little call on General Harmon. I figure it'll be easier to bring him to you than the other way around. Too bad you couldn't have gotten here sooner, Hayes. Kendall was here looking for you. How long ago was that? Oh, I don't know. Two, three days ago. I don't recollect exactly. You know where I can find him now? <laughs> Last time I saw Birch Kendall, he was headed west. Said he wanted to see what the land on the other side of the Mississippi looked like. Was he traveling alone? No. He was traveling with a fellow named Boone. Daniel Boone. Uh, that fits in with what I heard. Now, before you ask, I'll tell you, I don't sell liquor to an Indian. Yes, well, there are those that consider that a sound policy. However, that's not the purpose of my visit. What do you want from me? I'm looking for some information. Concerning what? Concerning a man named Kendall. Birch Kendall. Never heard of him. Hmm. That's strange. I was sure that I heard his name mentioned as I was coming in. You made a mistake. I told you I'd never heard of him. Well, perhaps you've seen him. I see a lot of people passing through. Yes, but not too many Negroes. For an Indian, you ask an awful lot of questions. For a tavern keeper, you don't have many answers. Good day, gentlemen. Sort of a hurry, ain't you, Hayes? You know that one's just walked out of here? You know, some breed they pass through from time to time. That was Boone's engine. Could be he knows a lot more about where Kendall is than you did. Or at least more than you're telling me. So long, Murdoch. Peaceful enough. A man can't take too much for granted. I don't like doing this, but I've got to make sure there's nobody out there waiting for us in those trees. Well, thank you, Boone. You fixed me now so I can't run and I can't fight. Well, you ran once before with the handcuffs on. I suppose. Somebody found me while you were gone. Now, somebody jumped you before you got back. Well, we'll just have to gamble on that. Besides, that won't be too far away. Well, let me ask you another question. What would happen if I gave you my word I wouldn't try to run away? I'd take your word, Birch. Well, you've got it. Just untie me. A man likes to feel he can defend himself. I'll do that, too. Oh, it feels good to be free again. You 
know what you've just done, Boone? You've given me that other chance. You haven't had that day's rest yet. You might be surprised what a good night's sleep will do for a man. I might be. What made you take the chance and cut me loose? Because I figured you wouldn't go back on your word. Well, you're right. I can't. I thought I could, but I can't. It's one thing I've never done. It's too late to try and change that now. Well, now, that's good, because I wasn't looking forward to having to fight you again. <laughs> you wait here. All right, I'll wait. Enough. I was beginning to think you were coming back. We made a full circle. There's nobody out there. Well, it is kind of late for anybody to be out on the prowl. Well, now we can have some food and get a good night's rest. Yeah. It's getting nice and brown. made you an Indian hater. He killed my family, Judge Kendall and his sons. Your family? Seems like an odd statement to you. My family died when I was a child. Judge Kendall took me in, raised me as his own, with his own. We ate together, slept together, played together, went to school together. When the time came, I went to war with them. They were family, or at least the only one I've ever known. How'd they die, Birch? I, I was out hunting. It was a hard winter. Game was scarce. Some Indians came, begged for food. Judge Kendall, the judge was a generous, kindly man. He gave them food, gave them clothes. In return, they killed him. They killed him, his sons, and they burned a house to the ground. Sometime afterward, I was told that he'd willed the land to me. Why haven't you ever gone back there? Back? Back to what? Four graves I dug myself. Some moss-covered stones where the manor house once stood. The land's still there. That doesn't change. <laughs> Neither do the memories that go with it. Now, you ask me why I hate Indians. A man has to have a purpose in this life, and they took mine from me. I put another in its place. I feel sorry for you. Sorry? I don't need your sympathy. You asked me a question, I answered it. No more need be said about it. All right, Birch. You stood guard the last couple of nights. 
I'll stand watch tonight. You get some sleep. I gave you my word. Well, maybe you might need this. That's enough, Birch. Get up from there. He's an Indian! I said get up from there. If you make one move to take his scalp, I'll take yours, and that's a promise. Parsons was right. You are an Indian lover. No. And why are you defending him? Like your Kendall family. Mingo's family to me. Well, I didn't know. He's not badly hurt. Come on, I'll help you get him over to the fire. So that's the story. I came to warn you in case you might decide to stop by some settlement to get supplies. Word of that were to get out, I'd have to have a bounty on you, too. Well, that's possible, but it doesn't alter the fact that you're both fair game for anybody with a gun. Look, Boone, let me go. You can clear yourself, but not if you're caught with me. They'd believe it if you told them I escaped from you. No. I don't be a fool. You tried to help me, but there's nothing you can do for me now. There's no point in your getting yourself killed on my account. Birch, did you kill the Indian? I told Boone already, a man named Hayes Fuller killed him, but he did it with my knife. Why? Why did he do it? Oh, he'd stolen from me, and I guess he thought that if he kept me on the run, I wouldn't be able to look for him. And look where? Oh, anywhere he could buy a drink, I suppose. That's if he had any money left. I meant to wait for him in the bottom. I heard he was going to show up there for a winter rendezvous. This uh, Hayes Fuller, what does he look like? Oh, he's an ordinary-looking man. Dark hair, knife scar on the right cheek. Yes, now that you mention it, why? Hayes Fuller has been trailing me since yesterday, ever since he heard me mention your name at Murdoch's Tavern. That sounds like Hayes. He got a bounty put on me, then try and collect it for himself. You mean to say he's been dogging your trail for two days and you didn't lose him? I didn't even try. When somebody's trailing me, I'd like to know exactly where he is and what he means to do. Are you sure he didn't follow you up here? I'm quite sure. The last time I saw him, he was bedding down. Oh, he'll wait until the morning and then try to pick up the trail again. He won't want to take a chance on losing my trail during the night. Mingo, you and Birch gather up some more wood. We're going to build a fire up there in those rocks that you can see from here to kingdom come. It'd be a shame for Mr. Fuller to lose you in the dark. How about you, Birch? But I feel a little bit like a turkey at a turkey shoot. 
Well, you got your friend Mingo out there standing guard. Why don't you trust him? Oh, I trust him. But he has a lot of territory to watch out for. This fellow Fuller, is he a good shot? Oh, good enough. But that's not the way he works. He'd be afraid to wake one of us. But if he thought we were asleep, he'd prefer to use a tomahawk or a knife. Well, that makes me feel a lot easier. All we have to do now is wait and see if he takes the bait. You take it, all right. He'd knife his father for a thousand dollars. A whole lot less. You know, it's a funny thing. All the time I've spent hunting Indians, and now I've got one watching out for me. Yeah, I reckon it does seem funny, Birch. But you know, you don't call all dogs mad just because one happened to bite you. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't. Me for. I ain't done nothing to you. Why have you been trailing me? I didn't mean you no harm. If I did, I, I could have downed you any time inside the last two days. All I figured was that you could lead me to a friend of mine. You figured right. Now, if you would just start walking toward the fire. Gentlemen, we have a visitor. What a surprise! My old friend Fuller! <laughs> Hayes, what are you doing here? Well, I'm looking for you. I've been looking for you for nine to a week now. I bet you have. Yes, sir. I'm mighty glad I ran across you. I was real worried thinking someone might have shot you for the bounty. There's a bounty on my head? Now, what could that be for? Well, you don't have to play games with me, Birch. I'm your partner. Tell this Indian that, so he'll put the gun aside. Did you hear what the man said, Mingo? He's my partner. Put the gun away. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, Birch and me, we've been friends for a real long spell. Hunted together. Trapped together. Just like brothers. Well, ain't you gonna introduce me to your friends? Well, no. Did I forget my manners again? <laughs> I did. Uh, Boone, Mingo, this is Hayes Fuller. A liar, a thief, and a murderer. I got into you, Birch. You got no call to name me all them names. I got some cause. Now, sit down, Hayes. You and me, we're gonna talk. No. No, I don't see my welcome around here. I'll just be going. What's the meaning of this? You know the meaning of it, Hayes. Now start talking. Talk about what? Well, we might start with that Indian you knifed. And why you tried to frame me for his murder. I don't know what Indian you're talking about. I'm talking about the Indian you killed with a knife you stole from me. 
I swear I didn't do it. Now, I got robbed the same time as you did, only I woke up and I took out after him. I never did catch up to him. By the time I got back, you'd already gone. You're a liar, Hayes. I don't have to take that off you. You two just gonna stand there and let a beat on me? I reckon we are. I'm kind of interested in hearing what you've got to say. All right, Hayes, talk. Tell him about it. Can't you see? He's the one that's lying. I never stole. You can ask anyone. They'll tell you Hayes Fuller's as honest as day is long. Now, Hayes, tell him the truth. I already told it. I ain't gonna hang for something you done. I'm gonna cut you for that, mister. Drop the knife, Fuller. Stay out of it, Mingo. Knife or no knife, he belongs to me. To let me kill him. I was tempted to, but he's no good to either one of us dead. Now, are you going to talk, or am I going to turn him loose on you again? All right, I'll talk. Only keep him away from me. I'm listening. I killed the engine, like he said. Only it was self defense. He was coming at me with a tomahawk. Well, you got to believe me. <laughs> We're not far from the Licking River. If we move fast, we'll be able to get to the general by morning. Kendall, I suppose you know I can still hold you for assaulting the guard and breaking prison. Yes, I know, General, but you couldn't hang me for that. If I hadn't run, you'd have me buried six feet deep by now. That's quite possible. As it stands now, it seems that the Army owes you an apology. You too, Mr. Boone. May I say I'm glad that it turned out this way. Thank you, General. Before we uh, go, General, you could do me a favor. Oh, what's that? You could spread the word that I'm no longer worth shooting. I'd rest a little more easy. I've already sent out couriers, but you might be cautious for a day or two. Good luck to you. Well, I don't know how to thank you. I owe you my life. You don't owe me anything. The way I see it, Mingo saved us both. If it had been for him, some bounty hunter would be drying both our hides by now. Well, how do I thank you, Mingo, brother? Would you might begin by shaking hands and giving me your word not to try to scalp me the next time we meet. <laughs> Which way are you headed now, Birch? Back to the bottoms? No, I've been traveling the wrong road for a long while. I think it's almost time I went back home. No, you were right, Boone. The land's still there. It doesn't change. I could start planting. I could, I could build a manor house again. I, you know, I think that would please the judge. I expect it would. Well, I'll say goodbye for now. If you ever come to Pennsylvania, you'll know where to find me. He said a man has to have a purpose. Looks like he found one for himself again. 